Hello, YouTubers. This is Triple Seven Die Hard Forever coming at you with another highly anticipated and highly recommended model as I continue to play catch up. Today, I'll be doing a review on a Gemini Jets Air Lingus Airbus A321 Neo new engine option longer range aircraft featuring the Sharklet wingtip devices in their current updated revised livery scheme in a 1 200 scale model. I purchased this model from Easy Toys and their website address is www.easytoys.com. But first, before I go into details about this particular aircraft model, please allow me to share with you some information about the history of Aer Lingus and how they actually came about. Aer Lingus is an Irish-based airline that was founded on April 15, 1936 with a startup capital of £100,000 and was registered as an airline on May 22, 1936 and officially commenced operations five days later on May 27, 1936 with the airline's first flight was from Dublin, Ireland to Bristol, England using a six-seater de Havilland DH-84 Dragon biplane named Lolar as the name Aer Lingus was actually proposed by Richard F. O'Connor who was a county surveyor of Cork Island as well as an aviation enthusiast as the angelicization Irish word Aer Lingus actually means air fleet as the airline was officially established as the national carrier under the Air Navigation and Transport Act of 1936. Aer Lingus is the national flag carrier airline for the country of Ireland and the country's second largest operating airline after Ryanair, whereas the corporate headquarters of Aer Lingus along with the airline's main hub and base of operations is located on the grounds of Dublin Airport which is located approximately 6.2 miles north of Dublin Island in the Dublin suburb of Collinstown, Fingal County. Aer Lingus also has a United States corporate headquarters that's located in the Long Island town of Jericho, New York which is located approximately 20 mi 29 miles east of the midtown Manhattan section of New York City, New York. Aer Lingus also has operational base hubs that's located at George Best Belfast City Airport located in Belfast County, Northern Ireland, Cork Airport located in Farmers Cross, Cork City Island, and Shannon Airport located in County Clare, Shannon Island. As of June 2022, or at the time of this video review post, Aer Lingus currently flies to 93 destinations across Asia, Europe and North America with an all Airbus operating fleet of 51 aircraft that includes seven Airbus A321 Neos, new engine option longer range aircraft including this one here with no unfulfilled orders pending on this particular aircraft type variant. However, in addition to the 51 aircraft that currently operates in the Aer Lingus fleet, the Irish space carrier also has unfulfilled orders for an additional eight more aircraft, which includes six more Airbus A321 XLRs, extra long range aircraft, and those aircraft, as we speak, are currently on back order and are awaiting delivery. Also, as of June 2022, or at the time of this video review posting, Aer Lingus is one of 59 airlines in the world of aviation that currently operates as a certified four-star airline carrier according to the international airline review firm Skytrax magazine and the Airbus destination code for Aer Lingus on this particular aircraft is 53NX. Alright everyone, let's take a look at the front of the box and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal. The Aer Lingus billboard title, the airline's corporate logo, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, the aircraft type, the 1 200 scale dock as model aircraft information, as well as the item number information you see at the front of the box. All right, now you're looking at the back of the box, and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, some more little detail information, as well as the social media pages of Gemini Jets. You can pause and read that information if you like. In the meantime, I'm going to keep this moving. All right. All right, now you're looking at the top of the box, and what you see at the top of the box is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the adult collectible model and warning information, as well as the item number information you see at the top of the box. All right, now you're looking at the bottom of the box. It's pretty much a flap there. The bottom of the box, you see a little button flap you see there, the flap button you see there. Right above that is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal. 
All right, now you're looking at the left side of the box, and what you see is the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the one 200 scale diecast model and item number information, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, as well as the aircraft type you see at the left side of the box. All right, now you're looking at the right side of the box. It's pretty much the same information on the left side of the box I showed you earlier on, okay? All right, now you're looking at the front of the box, but this time I got the box laid down on the table. And the reason is, is the little flap right here I showed you right there earlier. Now I'm going to flip that up and let you see what's inside the, uh, the box. That is the packaging, folks, the top part of it. And you see there, that is the tripod stand, but I won't be doing a review with that tripod stand. But uh, this is the foam to protect the model and all the accessories that came with the model. So with that, I'm going to take that on and let you see what's inside of the packaging. Let's check it out. This is what's inside of the packaging, the actual model stand, okay? All right, there's the alternative model stand that I'm gonna do the model review with. You can buy this particular model stand on eBay for maybe about anywhere from six to about 10 bucks plus shipping. It's well worth it. It's a lot better than that tripod stand that came with the model, I'll say that much, okay? All right. With all that information out of the way about the history of Aer Lingus and how they actually came about, plus all the details here at the front of the box, as well as the information at the back of the box, the packaging, the alternative model stand that, can, uh, that I'm gonna do the model review with. And since this particular model aircraft model does not have the gear replacement doors for this particular aircraft model, with no further ado, everyone, here is the actual model out of the packaging box. Let's check it out. There it is, the Gemini Jets Air Lingus Airbus A321neo new engine option aircraft, the longer range version in their updated revised livery scheme in a 120 scale model. Alright, allow me to share with you some information about the updated revised livery scheme of Air Lingus as you see on this aircraft here. This is the updated revised livery scheme of Air Lingus, which actually became the the livery scheme that eventually replaced the carrier's iconic 1996 Shamrock livery scheme, which was unveiled on January 17, 2019, on the grounds of Dublin Airport in Dublin, Ireland. As this updated revised livery scheme also features a brand new updated revised typeface, which happened to be the airline's name, Air Language. The updated refreshed Shamrock as its logo, as well as the brand new updated color livery scheme. Whereas the airline's updated revised livery scheme consists of a white fuselage as well as a new colored palette that also consists of two contrasting typical shades of teal green. The rich teal green, the dark green that's actually displayed on the Air Lingus billboard titles, the engine columns, the sharply wingtip devices, as well as on the rear of the fuselage represent strength and confidence while the light green teal is actually displayed on the airline's logo as well as the cheap line stripe that's displayed at the rear of the fuselage modernizes the design and reflects the airline's value carrier proposition while the contracting teal and light green of the shamrock logo represents a combination of strength confidence and modernity as the logo actually resembles that of a three heart shaped leaves plus a stem tilt that actually reflects the warmth hospitality of air language and the very first aircraft that actually begun supporting this livery scheme was an Air Lingus Airbus A330-300 jetliner aircraft, which bears the registration ship number EI-EDY. And at the time of this video review posting, the entire Air Lingus fleet is painted in this updated revised livery scheme, as this livery scheme was actually created and designed by the consultancy firm of Lippincott, whose global headquarters is located in New York City. So... With all that information out of the way about this particular livery scheme, with no further ado, everyone, let's get down to the business and allow me to show you all the details on this aircraft model, shall we? Let's check it out and let's begin. All right, we're going to start at the front of the aircraft here on the port slash left side. We're going to start at the front nose landing gears, the landing gear struts, the landing gear door featuring the... Um, Partial registration ship number on this nose gear door, RA. See the Peter 2s and the static ports, what have you. The radon nose cone. 
the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows. I'm going to give you a better visual view of those details later on in the model review. And right underneath the cockpit window is the name of the aircraft, St. Rowan, which is this name you see right here. And Aer Lingus decided to christen their very first Airbus A321neo LR new engine option longer range aircraft in honor of St. Rowan, who was actually a Christian abbot who founded the Monastery of Lore, which is located in County Ther Tipperary, Ireland, in the village of Terryglass, who was actually venerated to sainthood as one of the 12 apostles of Ireland shortly after his death on April 15, 584 AD. As April 15 is actually considered feast day, which is celebrated every year throughout the country of Ireland, as the country as well as the airline Aer Lingus pay their honorary respects to this individual, St. Rowan. And now you see the um, up here above the windows, the Aer Lingus title, as well as the updated revised Aer Lingus logo you see right here. This is the updated revised corporate logo of Aer Lingus, as you can see displayed on the L1, the L1 entrance door right here. Next to the Aer Lingus billboard title I showed you earlier there. Uh, inside the Sharklet wingtip device. I'm about to show you that now. There, you're looking at it on the starboard side. You get the airline's logo on the port side, you see there as well. As well as on the tail fin of the aircraft. There is actually called a shamrock, which is a young sprig or a small bot botanical plant species of a clover plant flower that's also considered the national flower and the country symbol of Ireland. As the updated revised shamrock logo represents a combination of strength, confidence, and modernity, as this logo actually resembles that of a three heart shaped leaves plus the stem tilt that actually reflects the warmth hospitality of Aer Lingus and has been the airline's signature trademark logo since it was introduced in 1965 as this logo can be visibly seen on just about every Aer Lingus aircraft that's currently flying in their fleet today. Alright, we stay at the front of the aircraft and right next to the, uh, the airline's logo as I mentioned earlier is the Aer Lingus billboard title which is this name of the aircraft you see right here. And that's the name of the airline as the Angelicization Irish word Aer Lingus literally means air fleet. Okay. And then underneath the windows and right next to the um, the L1 entrance door is the Airbus A321 Neo decal, which is displayed right here. Aer Lingus officially became the first airline in the IAG, the International Airline Group as well as the six operator in the world of aviation overall that acquired this prestigious state-of-the-art narrow-body type jetliner aircraft as Aer Lingus took delivery of its first of seven Airbus A321neos new engine option long-range aircraft that Aer Lingus had placed orders for back on June 20, 2019 and received their very first Airbus A321neo new engine option long-range aircraft which bears the registration ship number EI that's LRA, which happened to be this aircraft looking at here, on June 26, 2019, and received their very last Airbus A321 Neo new engine option long range aircraft, which bears the registration ship number EI that's LRF on June 21, 2021. Aer Lingus has ordered a total of seven Airbus A321 Neos to add to their fleet, and at the time of this video review posting, all seven of their Airbus A321neos new engine option long-range aircraft are currently operating in service as Dublin and Shannon has become the actual gateway basis for this particular aircraft type with the lion's share of their Airbus A321neos new engine option long-range aircraft currently operates mostly from the carrier's main operating base hub at Dublin Airport in Dublin Island as this aircraft eventually became the aircraft that ultimately replaced the carrier's entire fleet of Boeing 757-200s, which officially withdrew from the Aer Lingus fleet on March 16, 2020. All right. 
All right, now you're looking at the center of the aircraft, but you're looking under the wings, and underneath the wings you're looking at is the uh, outer landing bogey gears you see here, including the landing gear doors you see there as well. But more important, these nice looking massive engines for this particular aircraft, you see the uh, engine cones there. And these are the CFMI-LEAP, which literally stands for Leading Edge Aviation Propulsion-1A33 turbofan type engines that are used on this particular Air Lingus Airbus A321 Neo new engine option long range aircraft. Now we're going to turn this aircraft model around. We're going to actually find out if the turbo fan blade spin on this particular aircraft. Let's check it out. All right. Now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the uh, port slash left side where you see the engine strike slash air deflectors right here and right there as well. Now let's see if the fan blades spin on it. Yes, they do. Perfect. Awesome. However, there's no uh, inboard land light on this particular aircraft, but you got a front visual view of the uh, outer bogey gears on this side of the aircraft, which includes the landing gear struts, as well as the actual landing gear doors. All right, now you're looking at the uh, front of the engines here on the starboard slash right side, featuring the uh, engine strike slash air deflectors on this side here as well, there and there. Now let's see if the fan blade spin over here as well. Yes, perfect. There's no inboard land light on this side here either, but you got the front visual view of the uh, outer landing bogey gears here on the side of the aircraft, which includes the landing gear struts, as well as the actual landing gear doors on this side as well. All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft where you got a better visual view of the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, the radar nose cone, the nose gear doors, the landing gear lights inside of the nose gear doors, the landing gear struts, as well as the front visual view of the front nose landing gears. All right, we're still on the port side of the aircraft. What you're looking at is the wingtip device, this green painted wingtip device you see right here. And it actually began back in 2009 when Airbus came up with another creative name for these blended winglets, as you can see here, in which the company decided to call them the Sharpens, which is designed to enhance payload range performance, resulting in less fuel consumption at the same time. Auckland, New Zealand based Air New Zealand actually became the first airline to actually have the Sharplet installed in their Airbus A320 aircraft back in 2012. And then there's the uh, red navigation light you see next to this uh, Sharplet wingtip device there as well. All right, now you're looking at the back of the aircraft here on the uh, port slash left side. What you're looking at right next to the IS flag decal is the actual registration ship number, EI, that's LRA, which happened to be this registration ship number you're looking at here. Registration ship number EI-LRA. This particular aircraft was the very first Airbus A321 Neo new engine option long range aircraft that entered the Aer Lingus fleet. And the first test flight on this aircraft took place on July 20, 2019 and was delivered to Aer Lingus on July 26, 2019. All right, we still at the back of the aircraft. Right next to the registration ship number is the Irish flag decal. You see this little decal right here. And that flag decal represents the country where Aer Lingus currently operates from as the national flag carrier airline for the country of Ireland. And then looking at the less little, uh, light green cheat lines I mentioned earlier. And then there's the dark cheat line, the rest of the tail fin there as well, the airline's logo. And that's the uh, partial registration ship number RA that sits right there on top of the tail fin of the aircraft. All right, now you're looking at the back of the aircraft. What you're looking at is the APU uh, zero air uh, power unit exhaust hole. Unfortunately, there's no hole there, but un underneath the APU exhaust hole is two little dots, them little strobe lights, as well as the entire aircraft from the rear view angle. Let's check it out. There it is. The Aer Lingus Airbus A321 Neo new engine option long range aircraft from the rear view angle. All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the starboard slash right side of the aircraft where you see the front nose landing gears, the landing gear struts, the landing gear door featuring the partial registration ship number on there, RA and the ETOPS information. See the Peter tubes and the static ports, what have you, the radon nose cone, 
the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows. Rodan, Rowan, okay, it's 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 uh, pronounced over here R U D D A N Rowan, it's the same thing, okay. Then you see the airline's corporate logo, the airline's billboard title, as well as the front. Bulk being the front uh, bulk being door you see there as well. Oh, I forgot to mention one thing: the Airbus A321 Neo you see displayed there as well. All right, now looking at the center of the aircraft, but first looking at the uh, CFMI Leap Leading Edge Aviation Propulsion Dash 1833 Turbofan Type Engine on this side of the aircraft here, featuring the engine strikes and the air deflectors there, the engine cone. Then you got a side vision view of the outer landing bogey gears on here, include the uh, landing gear doors, as well as the Charlotte wingtip device you see displayed here, including the green navigation light you see there as well. All right, now you're looking at the uh, back of the aircraft here on the starboard slash right side of the aircraft. What you're looking at is the rear uh, bolt bin door right here, the AFT bolt bin door, the Irish flag decal, the registration ship number, the uh, airline's corporate logo, uh, the re partial registration ship number you see there, RA, as well as the two color cheat line you see back here at the back rear end of the aircraft. All right. All right. Before I show you this aircraft model from the aerial bird's eye view as well as the undercarriage belly view in its entirety in full detail, please allow me to let you check out one feature, which is the rolling gears. I'm going to show you it right now. It rolls pretty good. So far, so good. The aircraft model does tilt. Tilt by itself. Perfect. Unfortunately, the front nose landing gear on here does not swivel, as you can see there. So with that being said, that's the only downside about this particular aircraft model, but other than that, it's pretty good. So with that said, let's check this aircraft from the aerial bird's eye view. Let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at this aircraft model from the aerial bird's eye view, where we're going to start at the front of the aircraft, where you see the uh, radon nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows. Then you look at the top of the aircraft, a high frequency antenna. Then you see the Aer Lingus titles and the corporate logo on both sides. Then you see the uh, anti collision beacon light right there. The ADF antennas in 3D. Another high frequency antenna. And then that's the satellite communications antenna. And then there's another uh, high frequency antenna. And then that's the vertical stabilizer known as the tail fin, as well as the horizontal stabilizer. Some warning information on the uh, horizontal stabilizer. And the little black dot you see there, as well as over here as well. Those little dots, everyone, are actually called illuminator lights. And the sole purpose of those illuminator lights is that it actually light up this tail here when it flies during nighttime. Now, let's check out the engines and the wings from above. There's the engines right there. There's the wing walkway on top of the engines, as well as the warning information. It includes the flap, slats, ailerons, spoilers, what have you. And then there's the uh, Charlotte wingtip device featuring the corporate uh, airlines logo on, you see displayed there as well. Now let's check out the engines over here. Engines, top of the wings featuring the wing walkway as well as, well as the uh, warning information. Includes the flap, slats, ailerons, spoilers, what have you. As well as the uh, Charlotte wingtip device featuring the airlines corporate logo on this side here as well. All right, now you're looking at the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model. We're going to start at the front there as well. Where you see the radon nose cone. You see the A321 Neil. That's what this aircraft variant is. See the crew escape hatch door. And then you come up here, you see the front nose landing gear door as well as the front nose landing gear. And then you slide up this way, a high frequency antenna, the NACA duct, the anti-collision beacon light, the actual model hole where the model stand goes in at the Gemini Jets uh, logo a high frequency antenna the pressure relief valves on both sides the APU housing door as well as the horizontal stabilizers underneath and now we're going to start to the gears right here 
is there. There's the engines there, as well as the wings underneath, which includes the flat slats, aileron spoils, what have you, registered chip number, as well as the Charlotte wing tip device you see there. Now let's check out over here. The gears there, and the engines, as well as the wings underneath, which includes the flat slats, aileron spoils, what have you, as well as the uh, winglet wing sharklet wing tip device on this side of the aircraft as well all right since i show you this aircraft model from the aerial bird's eye view as well as the undercarriage belly view in its entirety in full detail now i'm going to put it on that alternative model stand that i mentioned earlier instead of the tripod stand that came with the model so with no further ado, everyone, here is the model on the stand. Check it out. All right, fine. got this model on this alternative stand. No problem, no hesitation. As you see, it's, it's holding on pretty good on this stand. Now, I'm going to let you check this model out in, while it rotates in a clockwise rotation, starting with the uh, port side looking at here. Now you're looking at it from the tail cam angle. Now you're looking at it from the starboard side. The front of the aircraft. And back to the port side of the aircraft. All right, and since this particular aircraft model has no gear replacement doors, I'm going to go ahead and take this model off the stand and go ahead and wrap up this model review, all right? All right, the seating configuration. The Air Lingus Airbus A321neo new engine option long-range aircraft seats 184 passengers in a two-class configured cabin layout. All right, everyone, here's the breakdown, everyone, from rows two to six, which will be from here to about right here. You have 16 business class live flatbed seats in row 7 to 34, which will be from here all the way back to the rear of the aircraft. You have an additional 168 economy class seats, which brought the total to, which brings the total, sorry about it, which brings the total to 184 seats. And finally, Air Lingus currently employs this aircraft or have previously utilized this aircraft, the Airbus A321neo new engine option long range aircraft on routes from Dublin, Ireland to Boston, Logan, Massachusetts, Hartford, Connecticut, London, Heathrow, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota, Montreal, Canada, Newark, New Jersey, Paris, Charles de Gaulle, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Rome, Fumicino, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and Washington, Dulles, from Shannon Island to Boston, Logan, Massachusetts, and New York, JFK, and from Manchester, England to Bridgetown, Barbados, New York, JFK, and Orlando, Florida. Those are the routes. Where well, everyone, this will conclude this model review. I'd like to know if you got this model or you plan on getting it. A couple of deals, including Easy Toys, where I purchased this model from, still had this model still available, and then there's a lot of deals that are pretty much sold out of it. It's a nice model. If you can get your hands on it, please do so. Uh, I highly recommend it. So with that said, please take care. God bless. Stay tuned. There's more model content coming. I also have the Air Lingus 330 in this same livery as well. I'll be doing a review on that later on as well. So with that said, take care. God bless. And above all, everyone, please stay safe out here. Peace.